first thing to do, relax, get yourself suitably chilled out. This is the this is the mystical um, secrets of my palette. A mess, okay? Basically, just a mess. I don't go for little dabs of colour around the edge, you know, where you take a bit from here and a bit from there and a bit there. No, forget that. This is painting on an industrial scale. So, paints grey, sap green, red ochre. Big sludgy mess. Not too drippy. And if you're going to do a nice big path, what you want to do is raise your horizon. If you raise the horizon, you're looking down more. If you have a low horizon, you're looking up more. That's the, that's the feeling it gives people. So this is going to be one of the smallest skies I've ever painted, probably. So all we do is just put in a line. Let's just check that focus before I go on. Right, I think that's focused. Okay, so if you remember the painting, it sort of disappeared over this way. There's a tree, which will go there. That's a big, big lumpy tree. Nice and dark. Always make underneath the tree nice and dark, because that's where the shadows are. And then over here, a little bit of tree on the edge. I'll turn that into a tree, uh, more of a tree, uh, later in the painting. So I think there was one here. Um, something there anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and this is not a distant horizon. Th this horizon is only as far away as the end of the path. So we're looking up a, a hill. So if you want a path to give you the feeling of actually being there, this is how you do it. Have a little raise in the ground there slightly. Path is going to go around and disappear over there. So what I did in the in the original with this will be a, a more tonalist version of the painting that you saw. In other words, not no bright greens and yellows and stuff, or, or at least not at this stage anyway. So down here, let's pull that right down there. Okay, now because a path, uh, well, because a path is called a path, no, no, that's not just to make sense, does it? Um, right, not all paths are exactly the same width all the way along them particularly if it's an ancient path, because they might have a little sort of wider bit there so the wagons could pass each other. That was what I was thinking when I painted the original picture. There we go. So now this is the path between these lines. That's the path. All this stuff over here, I'm just going to make texture. But one thing that will help your painting immensely is what I'll do to the actual path in a few moments. Once I've got the colour at the edge of the path. Right, what's in there doesn't matter at the moment. It's irrelevant. And then on the other side, same deal, just the edge, that's all I'm interested in. And the thing that will connect the path to the land is the fact that it is not a hard line. Now, in a city or a village, Right, it's going to be a hard line because there'll <clears throat> there'll be a curb stone, you know, um, what's it you call it in America? A, um, a sidewalk, right? Um, in in England, it's a path or a road, uh, a path or a track, I suppose. But anyway, where they connect, right there. If I do this all the way along the edge. Okay, now when you want to get a feathered effect like that, you're not necessarily stabbing at it. You're sort of gently pulling the two together. And that will put the path on the landscape rather than it being like a scar that's been, well, not a scar. Um, instead of it looking like a pale tarmac plopped on top, it's got a, it's got a relationship with the land. In other words, the, the grass stops growing because it's worn away at the edges. You don't want it... Um, too crisp. Okay, so there's a path. Let's just put a few textures. Now the path, depending on what era you're sort of, you know, hinting at, I'll just get a bit of red in there because I think I'll need that in a minute. This is a bit of a little bit of red ochre going in there. Okay. 
Um, chances are, if it's an old pass, even if, you know, not, I'm not talking about an ancient, um, you know, um, old master style painting, but there probably might be bits of grass that grow down the middle of the path. And they always, it's always a hump in the middle. So if you sort of make, see what the brushes are doing, it's almost working like a compass. If I do that down there, you'll see it'll start to look like grass that's growing down the middle. And then you've got to, in your mind's eye, you've got to see where would that go? It wouldn't go there. That would be wrong. It can only look right. This is one of those things that is just instinctive. It can only look right if it leans off that way. Because we are standing slightly to the left of the path. And take that all the way down, exaggerate it as it gets right to the bottom. Like so. So it's right at our feet. It could it could be sand, couldn't it? It could actually um you could change it so that it's like sand dunes, and over the other side is the sea. And this is the track to get to the beach. This is the track where you realize you're wearing the wrong sandals. And there's this effect again, which I always like, and that is don't paint, don't paint all of the grass and it becomes snow. That totally fascinates me. It's going to be a bit of snow on the ground. It's not going to be. It's just going to be texture. And there we are. Let's scumble that. This is scumbling. Now, I could, what I could do, you see, I could do all this sort of feathering. It's like feathering, I suppose, at the edge, like so. Let's take the central tuft of grass just up there. There we are. So it goes round the corner. It's a little bit, it might need softening, but it's okay. And then down here, again, more feathering, that feathering effect. And once you've done that, just fill this up with texture here. Yeah, that's good. Um, Now this this path you see could be a bit boring if it was the same thickness all the way. That little bump in it when I painted the original picture, that was to um to just hold people back a bit. Like what is that for? Why why has the painter done that? Uh, and the fact that you're you might hesitate and look at it explains why I did it. It's uh, to get people to look at it. So here's a here's a, an interesting skyline without actually worrying about whether it looks like a a real skyline or not. Just the odd hint. Now this tree will be slightly more spectacularized. But now I've got that all that feathering done. You see, I can get a piece of paper. I can either get a piece of paper or I can get a brush that's been heavily abused either will work but maybe not today unless i can find it well this this is one that um i should have cleaned and i didn't okay so this is what i want actually nice and crisp and if i push that to the edge. I wonder if you can see it. I'm just checking my camera. Uh, it's sort of, it's not particularly obvious, but maybe if I choose a really dark part of the painting there, if I start pushing that way, away from the path, you can get various uh, motions. These are motions, you know, this graph is turning that way and turning this way and sort of you know, grass doesn't necessarily just go straight up. It's always a bit boring if it goes straight up, I think. And I can use this also to scrape away some paint here. I could use paper, of course, there, but I could also use this brush. Like so, just to flatten the land out a little bit over the top there. And 
Let's have a little mark or two there. Just have a look in the camera. Okay, I want to make that a little bit more obvious. You'll see it when I photograph the painting, but I want to, I want you to see it while I'm painting it. So I'll just sort of uh, exaggerate a few places. Like I just. So that might show up better. I think it does. Okay, so it's a, not a bad bit of pass there. Bumps. Amazing what a few bumps do in a landscape. So we got, okay, we've got this bit of light here, which I'll just exaggerate a little bit more. And then something, let's do a tree. But before I do the tree, um, what I had planned, not that I usually plan much, is uh, to put some white in the sky and then work the tree into the white. Let's have a go at that. Don't forget, I don't, um, don't know how many of you are painting along, but as you, as you paint, the way, uh, before I put the white on, I just want to fill this up. Um, don't forget, you know, it, you're not painting a door. You're, you're uh, attempting to produce visual poetry. So make, make interesting shapes. In other words, you know, be a little bit unpredictable. If you find yourself going, you know, oh, just let that, that colour there, and then just have a little bit here like that. Forget that. You want this sort of. Until you do this, those effects <laughs> won't appear. Obviously, the paint is is um, oily enough for this to work. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of having a little bare patch of land over there. Just leave that light bit and fill in below it. Don't know how it'll look yet, but it may be okay. Well, let's just get a bit more contrast below that. And this is, um, you know, I always say this, but this is just using the same colour that you find on your garage floor underneath the car where the oil has been dripping for a while. I always find it strange how you can make a painting out of that. Okay, that's looking nice and sort of veggie, you know? This is a vegan painting. Okay, so this tree, I, I like that shape there. I got this thing about hawthorn and I'm surrounded by it here. And they do tend to sort of adopt that kind of flat shape. Anyway, before I before I do the sky, I just want to wipe these back a bit here because I'm going to be putting white on there. Now, uh, putting white on white, I could put a bit of blue in, but I'm not that bothered, frankly. Um, I'll just take the edge off that tree so that when I put white on on there, it won't interfere with it too much. It may actually make it a bit more interesting. So do I need a bigger brush? I now officially have more brushes than the hardware shop. Um, right, so this is just white paint, and this will this will pick up some of the color of the um, landscape as it stands at the moment. Now, I, I could have left it just as white board, um, and it probably would be quite interesting. Um, I have to say that thing that I just eradicated looks like a very interesting cloud, but not quite what I want. So it's just literally titanium white straight from the tube. And this is done with uh, uh, my brain disengaged. In other words, I don't really care what it looks like. I'm not trying to paint a sky. All I'm doing is applying paint. That's the best frame of mind to be in. Um, so the white is purely going on there so that the horizon will have something to work with. And that will all make sense in a moment. 
Um, I'm using a little bit of oil, uh, not, not so much that you'd notice, as they say, wherever they are. Okay, so I'm just working around the edge. Don't, don't even have to really touch the trees at the moment, but it doesn't matter if you do. Because if you do, and it picks up some of this color, uh, you'll probably find it quite interesting. It'll it'll produce something that's um, you know texturally interest texturally interesting, and um, it's uh, it's one of those things. I don't know how many art teachers actually teach this stuff, but it's um, it's not necessarily particularly with tone rhythm. It's not necessarily about the landscape. It's about the interest you can get from the paint. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about the top. I'll go to that later. So that's just put some white on there so that I can now start to do a little bit of tree work. Same colour as the landscape. Doesn't have to be suddenly a different colour. And uh, I'm not adding any extra oil to this. And in fact, it's so, I'll do the trick with the, um, you know, it is so non-drippy. See what I'm doing? Nothing, absolutely nothing is coming off there. It's all over my teeth, but it's not on the painting. So this tree that was here, let's put one back. Okay, now, rather than work on that, trying to make it darker, stop. Assess it, have a look at it, see whether it's an interesting tree. It doesn't have to be a realistic tree. Yeah, it has to be a, an interesting tree. So that's all I'm going to do on that one for a minute, except maybe just add a little bit of darkness at the bottom there, because that's where the shadows tend to lie. Okay, so we've got another one here. I might make that into a slightly bigger feature. I don't want to go too big because otherwise it'll look too too close to us. And it, actually looking at the perspective on the path, that's probably about the right distance. So let's do something with this tree. Now, with that one, I used the edge of the brush, you know, the sharp edge. Uh, and that's, that's one way of doing it. With this one, I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to get a lump of color. So I'm going to move slower because I want to apply slightly more paint. Because this, this, as I'm thinking now, is my mystery tree. This is where the path disappears behind it. So who knows what happens down there? Now, the brush, uh, you don't see much on the brush. Uh, you, you may, if I hold it against something dark, you may see that it's slightly lighter around the edge. I don't necessarily want that. So I'll just give it a quick wipe. Now, if I was mixing oil with this, when I put it on the sky it would just vanish it would just blend in straight away so by keeping this thick and this is this white actually it's um you know it's not drippy it's just uh, it's just enough as usual to make it mobile um if i move slowly and carefully on that i can still keep the paint reasonably dark Put a shape here because that'll give the appearance that there's a bit of a, a mound there. And why not? The only reason I'm doing it is because I can. It's the usual thing. It just might look good. It's just a few random shapes, you know, to convince the viewer that they really need to buy the painting. Okay, so that's sort of quite nice. That's past. Sort of, in fact, I think we need a bit more, a bit more light. I want that to fade into that bit there. 
Right then, so uh, let's have a little bit of... Okay, don't forget grass, don't paint grass. Paint things like that. Don't think grass. If you do it right, they will, grass will appear. Get back to that tree in a minute. So anyway, that, I hope that gives you an idea about perspective. I'm going to add some tones uh, to the path. And um, let's just make this tree more tree-like. So until I decide what the edge is going to be doing, I'm going to be, I'm going to be touching that really delicately because, like I said, I want the paint to sit on top of the white. And that's a, there's a useful little trick there. You, again, you're going to see it when I take a photograph, but where the sky and the tree mix there, you get light hitting that side of the tree. It gives an, a nice, quite a nice effect. As long as you keep this side of it nice and dark. Okay, now this bit of horizon here, let's um, just see, see what happens, really. In other words, all I'm doing, and which means that you can do it, is just moving back and forth very, very lightly there, just to get a feeling of something going on in the distance. That's all. There's no, there's no big mystery to that. It's just, you know, back and forth, back and forth. I could probably add a little bit of distance over there, just a little touch. Like so. And back to this tree, and then a little bit of scratching around on the path, and then maybe I'll do something with the sky. It won't be, it won't be um, you know, it's not going to be one of these stormy skies that I, uh, I paint. A calm one, I think. Okay, so, and again, this is also the reason why I use these really cheap brushes, you know, it's, um, the fact that they're all straggly on the end, you cannot help but make interesting tree shapes. Don't forget trees, you know. Don't don't make them too um too cropped, too um too organized. Nature just isn't that way. I'm sure some of you live in a place where there's well, you know, there's sort of very wild sort of uh untended land, that sort of thing. And it may seem it may be something that you you know, it might might not be easy for you to do, but if you can actually get out you know, sit for a while and just look at trees and the mess that most of them are. Uh, once you transmit that into your painting, the more realis more realism you will get. That's sort of quite a nice... My slightly glowing effect on the horizon there. This is, it's quite interesting when I paint like this and I, I, I see on the screen what you're seeing. It's, it's, it makes it um, quite, it's quite difficult, you see, because what I, what I want you to do is to see it as I see it here. And... Um, I wonder what it is, you know, maybe, you see, I, I, my Zoom program, I paid for the whole thing. I don't, you know, it's not the free version. So it's, you'd think that the quality would be slightly better, but there you go. maybe it's just the way, the technology at the moment, although, you know, I don't really see why it should be like that when you think of you know, we can get pictures from Mars that are better than this. I suppose the camera's a bit more expensive. 
Okay, so we've got texture, we've got our sort of quite big tree. Now, you, this tree is actually quite dark. And again, you know, it's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exaggerate it a bit just to sort of give you an idea. I don't know whether it's worth it. I mean, you know, thank goodness for my my Nikon. There we go. I think I'll leave that like that for now. Now the path, what would I do with the path? Um, I think here, before I uh, establish this little bit of land here, uh, I'll put a tone on the path and it's, it's, it's really dead simple. It's just literally um, pick up what available paint is there. And that will tone the path down. Just just a little bit, not, you know, not too not too far. Um, and then uh, you couldn't see what I was doing then, but what I was doing, I was stabbing the brush down on the palette like that, just to spread the bristles a little bit on the end. And then I want to reestablish a few dark bits there. Okay, and the same sort of thing down here. Just get some grey on the path. Well, it's not grey, I mean, it's just a tone. And think about the shape. It's got a groove in the path where the wheels have been digging into the um, into the ground. Let's open that up a bit there, I think. And a lot, you can achieve a lot in a painting by not overdoing. For instance, um, I just get a little bit of paint on here and just sort of put in a few bits of color. So, but have a swing to it, you know, describe the actual shape. You don't have to go over the top with it, you know. Don't don't make it look too scooped, but just uh, enough to say what you want to say. Okay, so that I'm not going to worry too much about. Maybe a little bit of oil on it. And of course, uh, as you all know, no turpentine. So if you were in this room now, all you'd smell is a little hint of linseed oil, and that's it. So let me have a quick look at, oh yeah, over on the right hand side, we have another tree. That one up there doesn't look quite right to me. The photo will reveal, let's just make that, let's give that a little bit of, whatever I just gave it, a little bit of that. Okay, so that's good. That stops the eye going off that side. And then on the other side. Uh, well, like actually it could I could just leave it like that, you know, just sort of flat land disappearing over there. Maybe just a little bush. There's some accidental light bits here. Uh, and I want to keep them, but I might just sort of do that. just for the uh, the twinkle factor. So I've got this light stuff here, and I want to extend that out that way a little bit without going too far. And also down the bottom here. It's weird, you know, um, 
uh, painting away here and I'm thinking to myself, I almost wish I was you because you're going to be so shocked when you see this painting compared to this on your screen. It's really, it's like chalk and cheese. I can make that interesting down there just by doing that. There you go. It's now interesting. Okay. And I think we may almost be there. Now there's some accidental, there's some accidentals. Um, let's go up there a bit. I'm going to show you what you can, what what turns up in a painting occasionally. Okay, so these are little accidental lines there hanging down from that 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 tree. Now, what I might do is use them, and the way I'll use them is to just with a piece of paper, and. Because suddenly, you see, there are tree trunks. There are little tiny tree trunks. So who's to say that those little trees aren't lighter? And slightly in front of the uh, the other part. Yeah, I think that might be it, you know. I'm going to photograph this quite quickly and show you what you've missed. And uh, the effect also that it's giving is quite interesting because this, the very white bits here is the gesso showing through and it actually looks like water reflecting off the, um, off the path slightly. Um, I've just got a couple of things I want to do there. Just make sure you, yeah, you can see that. Just that, just that little bit of emphasis there is quite quite useful. I think we need a plant there that's blocking the view slightly. Right, I'm going to take a photo. So, I um, hope you enjoyed that and I'll uh, take the picture, upload it and then we can have a chat.